what's good y'all it's your boy ross back at again with another video so we're gonna check out wwe band in russia fans furious with nia Jax, triple h not returning awroh and other wrestling news we do know uh from watching uh this week's dynamite tony khan announced that he has purchased uh roh so it'll be interesting to see what they do with roh how that's gonna play out um for their shows and you know um where they're gonna take things but you know interesting news you know very very interesting news and we will see what happens in the future this should be a good one appreciate all the love and support let's do this thing man. mia here back with another video AEW revolution is this sunday so what twists and turns should AEW fans expect on last night's dynamite Join us now as we look at the second March edition of AEW's flagship show, as well as the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know, including Tony Khan buys Ring of Honor, Triple H not returning to WWE for some time, WWE cuts its ties with Russia, fans furious with Nia Jax, and much more. Be sure to subscribe and hit that subscribe notification bell for daily man. wrestling videos, and follow us on videos. Facebook for exclusive lists. As always, we won't recap the matches, but just look at the good, the bad, and the downright ugly. As always, we start off with the good as number one, the big announcement. Mm -hmm. Attorney Khan's big announcement lived up to the fans' expectations as the AEW president revealed that Ring of Honor is all elite. AEW has done a good job making sure it delivers when it promises something big, which only puts the pressure on the company to continue delivering, and deliver it did. Khan's mic skills may be bad or pretty much downright ugly depending yeah. on your opinion but his excitement was genuine and the booking of brian danielson versus christopher daniels as the show's opening match as both men competed in a triple threat match at ring of honor's kickoff show the era of honor begins number two brilliant build-up for the pay-per-view the last night's show featured plenty of action and enticing mm -hmm. segments but most of all it did well at getting fans interested in the pay-per-view with AEW relying on the pay-per-view model it's essential that it motivates fans to part with their hard-earned money and as fans in the US know, AEW shows run $49.95. AEW made sure every match on the show got mentioned and featured a match or angle to build it up. That's booking 101, and judging from AEW's buy rates, it's been paying off. Mm -hmm. well, we will be recapping the show on Sunday, so be sure to look out for that. Number three. And I, I think I want to do something different. For those who's in my stream, I, I kind of brought this up. Normally, I do my... Uh, thoughts and opinions video you know i already have it recorded and i just upload it to you guys but i'm thinking of actually after the event potentially maybe going live like maybe trying to live stream that potentially so i'm doing may i may do my thoughts and opinions live and that way you got guys can be in a chat and we can just have that dialogue and discussion i want to see if that's a possibility granted uh i would have to set it up pretty much immediately after we finish the live stream so i'm not sure how i'm gonna do it but i'm gonna try to make it work if not then you know i'll have to come up with something else but i am thinking about potentially doing that so comment down below let me know if you guys would like me to go live on youtube and do my thoughts and opinions on previous pay-per-views that you know or like the recent pay-per-view like if we check out a pay-per-view and then i do my thoughts and opinions live let me know if that'd be something you guys would be interested in predictable but perfectly executed and first things first mjf's shocking attack on cm punk was anything but shocking but it was brilliantly yeah. executed as mjf's mind games gave punk a reason to doubt himself for a moment over whether his exit from the grappling game in 2014 was responsible for mjf's existence AEW made sure to have Punk say he wasn't sure if he was buying MJF's song and dance, showing Punk isn't a fool, but that MJF is the master manipulator. MJF's bloody beatdown on Punk was a sensational setup for Sunday's yes, dog was. collar match, as the fans will have no sympathy for the salt of the earth while Punk pummels him. Number f I'm telling you now, that segment was so great. I loved it. I'm also going to be doing my uh, previews and predictions for AEW Revolution, so be on the lookout for that uh, probably this Saturday. For build up for Wardlow turn continues. And last night's interaction between Wardlow and his handler Sean Spears continued the tease over just mm -hmm. when the big man will reach his boiling point and destroy Spears and MJF. Don't be surprised to see Wardlow play a key role in the MJF vs Punk dog collar match as Wardlow's disdain for MJF's treatment of him galvanizes him into abandoning MJF. 
Can't wait for it. It's, it's going to happen. At some point, it will happen. Number five, Max Caster raps on Glenn Jacobs. Mm. Max Caster has quickly become one of AEW's most interesting performers, a talented performer whose battle raps are amusing as well as, well, controversial. Mm -hmm. This week, Caster took aim at Glenn Jacobs, aka former superstar Kane, over the Knoxville County Mayor's controversial tweet regarding the invasion of Ukraine. You might remember Jacob's tweet, and in case you missed it, Caster wrapped the following before Dynamite's Casino Tag Team I enjoyed that. Royal. I enjoyed FTR, that. FTR, you ain't safe. I'ma send your asses to Ring of Honor. Top flight can't be victorious. Y'all are drinking like the kids on Euphoria. With a reason <laughs> for people in these seats. Y'all are less popular than Glenn Jacobs' tweets. tweets. The caster nice. dissed Vladimir Putin last week, which goes to show you never can tell who will be the victim of Caster's scathing raps. Number six, Jericho promo. Is he actually turning heel? Now, the build-up to the Jericho vs. Eddie Kingston match at Revolution has been strong, largely due to the powerful promos between the two mm -hmm. veterans. However, could Jericho be preparing for a heel turn? His scathing comments on Kingston suggest Jericho's ego is getting the best of him and fans could be in store for Jericho embracing his heel persona that he certainly excels at. Yeah. Number 7, Women's Division continues to improve. You've come a long way, baby. If ever an advertising slogan was fit for AEW's women's division, that's it, as AEW's women have gone from weekly blunders to weekly wonders. Sure, there's plenty of room to improve, but mm -hmm. AEW is a strong core of women wrestlers and it continues to improve, as seen by the caliber of matches on last night's show and the ones booked for Sunday's pay-per-view. But that was good. What about? I could definitely see some more improvement with their division. They, I, I just think they need some more stars, but. Hey, man, it, it takes time. Everything can't just be, you know, perfect off the top. And granted, it's there's no real perfect wrestling show. There's always going to be some things that could be better. But in due time, I think their women's division will be, uh, um, I guess, on par with the men's division. Because they're still not on par with the men's division. They're, they're still lacking in the talent department. In my opinion, there's not as many stars as it should be. But I do think over time it will get to the point where, you know, the women's division will be at some point maybe even the highlight of the show. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm all for it. By the bad is number one, another tag team mess. Yeah. AEW had an amazing array of tag teams, but battle royals are not the way to build them up. Nope. Last week's battle royal was a mess, and this week's was no better, as an assortment of teams fought to get a spot in Sunday's AEW World Tag Team Championship match. As dull as a tag team battle royal was, the real problem is that it exposes AEW's inescapable problem. Too much talent and not enough television time to yep. feature them, despite the promotion's talent at making the most of its television time. Yep, and number two, a meh main event. Mm -hmm. Our last night's trios match was a meh main event. Despite the post-match beatdown doing well to hype Adam Cole challenging Hangman Adam Page for the AEW World Championship at Revolution. All six wrestlers can work well, but the Dark Order's John Silver and Alex Reynolds, as well as Fish and O'Reilly, don't belong in the main event, especially the Dark Order, which still hasn't recovered from the loss of Mr. Brody Lee. Now, there was nothing ugly about last night's episode as Dynamite delivered a strong build for its pay-per-view along mm -hmm. with some great matches and angles to keep the fans excited. Dynamite continues to make the most of its two-hour format despite the promotions over... Now, first story looks at Tony Khan buying Ring of Honor. Atopping today's headlines is a huge announcement that Tony Khan has purchased Ring of Honor. And how much did he buy it for? Well, Cassidy Haynes of Bodyslam.net reported that it's between 30 to 40 million dollars. Now, you may recall rumors that Sinclair Broadcasting was looking to sell the promotion, and now the deal has been confirmed. Damn. Khan has acquired the assets of Ring of Honor Wrestling Entertainment, LLC, from Sinclair Broadcast Group, including the promotion's extensive video library dating back to 2002, wow. brand assets, intellectual property, production equipment, and more. Meltzer discussed who Ring of Honor contacted about the sale. Obviously, both WWE and AEW were contacted when the idea was to sell the company, and AEW was the one that obviously made the better offer to the mm -hmm. two and got the company. However, despite Meltzer's language, PW Insider reports Tony Khan has bought Ring of Honor and not AEW. Khan's purchase includes Ring of Honor tape library, and just the WWE's purchase of ECW and WCW gave it access to thousands of hours of wrestling programming. The speculation AEW plans on using it in a similar manner. Hmm. Meltzer commented, The tape library is very valuable to AEW because they want to do some sort of a streaming service, whether they sell something to HBO Max or do their own streaming service in some form. The amount of library with a lot of wrestlers, including one of the keys to that library, is Ring of Honor owned the All In Show, which is an important part of the history of AEW. Mm -hmm. Also, it had all kinds of tapes of Brian Danielson and a lot of other wrestlers, the Young Bucks, some of Kenny Omega, Jay Lethal. 
Now, there have been rumors of AEW starting a streaming service, but given the promotion's short run, it doesn't have much to offer. Mm. That could change with the Ring of Honor library, and it could even lead to AEW eventually moving its pay-per-views to a streaming service. Possibly. Next up, Ric Flair and Triple It's, it's going to take some time, man. Uh, do I think a streaming service would possibly help? Yes, but the thing is, they have to have something on that streaming service. You know what I'm saying? That's the one thing that WWE has the biggest advantage on with them streaming. Got you know, streaming service with Peacock is the fact that you can check out all their old catalogs, all the old. I think some WC they had the uh, WCW catalogs, ECW catalogs, some of the stuff, old pay per views, old shows. They have documentaries, all this. They have so much stuff you can check out because they, you know, they've been around for so long. So. I don't know. We'll see. I'm sure at some point AEW will go the streaming route, but we'll see what they have to offer with that. Triple H no longer friends. Oh, Are Major Boy Ric Flair and Triple H on the outs? Well, Ric Flair recently was asked on his new podcast what Triple H's current relationship with the WWE is since Helmsley took time off for medical reasons. Flair answered, he and I were incredibly close, and now I never hear from him, so I don't know. Oh, Flair damn. and Triple H were once the best of friends, with the game vocal in how Flair influenced his career, and Flair in turn thanking Helmsley for helping him get his self-confidence back in the ring when they teamed alongside Batista and Randy Orton in Evolution. Might Triple H's silence just be a case of the wrestler focusing his recovery from his recent Could cardiac be. incident, or do you think there's more to the story? But whilst we're on the subject, Triple H may not be returning to WWE for some time. And to be honest with you, it could be the whole controversy with what's going on with Rick and, you know, that he's still somewhat canceled. Like, WWE is kind of just distancing themselves from Ric Flair. So that could be a situation, but who knows, you know, I'm not <laughs> I'm not into, like, their, their personal friendship level. I don't know them personally, so I, I wouldn't know. Time. A wrestling cerebral assassin was heavily involved with NXT, but Vince McMahon's recent restructuring of the brand led to drastic changes, which had fans wondering whether Helmsley had any say in the brand. This has become a moot point after Tripp suffered a cardiac event last September, and now there's talk he may not be back in NXT for a long time, if ever. PW Insider is reporting that Lissetta Pineda, one of Helmsley's allies in NXT, was recently released. Pineda Damn. worked extremely close to Paul Levesque in a role described to PW Insider as Levesque's top executive assistant. So without him around, some of the company have relayed to us it was probably just a matter of time before she exited as Levesque has still yet to return to full-time work for the company since dealing with his heart issues and without him there, her role was limited at best. Alcoholic followed up on the news with this observation saying, Discussions also arose about the game's future with the company, with some question if he'll ever come back, partly because people who used to be in constant contact with Triple H haven't spoken to him in some time. Panetta's exit has also been perceived as a sign that Triple H won't be returning for some time. Damn. Do you think Triple H will return? Let us know in the comments down below. Next up, WWE cuts ties with Russia. You knew it was going to happen. Add WWE to the growing number of businesses who aren't tolerating Russia's invasion of Ukraine. WWE.com announced recently that WWE has terminated its partnership with Russian broadcaster Match and shut down the WWE network in Russia effective oh, wow. immediately. The move eliminates access in Russia to any WWE programming, including the company's weekly Raw, SmackDown, Damn. and NXT shows wow. on its on-demand library, and all of its premium live events, including WrestleMania 38. Wow. And finally, fans... That's crazy. Um, it's, it's a lot of craziness going on over there. I will say this, and I want to put this out there because um, we're not trying to promote hate. You know, we're not trying to promote fear or whatnot. Uh, one of our Russian subscribers actually reached out to us uh, a few days ago and, you know, they were letting us know, you know, they're innocent in this. They don't play no part in what's going on. They're they're guilty by association because they're Russian and they live in Russia. And, you know, he was basically saying the videos that we produce on the main page, on the Interclutch page, it, it really helps him during the time that they're, you know, he's dealing with right now. Where the whole world is pretty much against you, not because of what you're doing, it's because of what your leader is doing and what he's trying to do. And for those out there that are from Russia, that live in Russia right now, that have no part in none of this, I, I, I can only empathize and pray for you guys. Because pretty much the whole world is shutting y'all out. Like a majority of the world is trying to shut Russia out. You see right here. So um, it's just it's just a sad situation, man. It's a very sad situation. What's happening in Ukraine? 
to the people from Ukraine that live in Ukraine that that's an awful situation too. All of this is bad. I just wanted to put this out there because I, I I'm 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 big on just trying to promote as much peace as possible, most much positivity as possible. Because right now we need it in this world. So I don't even want to take too much long on that. I just wanted to put that out there, man. Like I'm praying for people in Russia and I'm praying for people in Ukraine as well. Fans are furious with Nia Jax. What did Nia Jax do? Least, it looks like former superstar Nia Jax's recent social media comments about the Russian invasion of Ukraine could take some heat off Kane after his own remarks were blasted by some for being insensitive. Oh, Jax boy. mentioned on Instagram, all these MFs saying I stand with Ukraine couldn't even stand for their own personal rights for two years because they were scared to breathe. And Nia Jax may be done with wrestling, at least that's mm. her current status, but the former superstar has lots to say on social media, whether it's her time in WWE, the debate over the effectiveness of masks to reduce the spread of COVID, or the current crisis in Ukraine. Mm. Well, one thing's for sure, Nia Jax may be the first superstar to suffer CTE while injuring other wrestlers. But there you have it, folks. Bro. Now look at this week's edition of- I- I- that- I get what she's saying. Um, yeah. That's not that. Yeah, the timing on you, the timing on that was not necessary, man. Like that, it's one of those type of things where it's like it comes off insensitive, like to say to say that in the in the time period we in now. I would have just kept that to myself. I just would have kept that to myself because it comes off insensitive. People are losing their homes. People are losing their lives. People are being displaced. This is not the time to pick another issue to ride high and mighty on like that i i can't stand people who see a current issue happening but then they bring up a previous issue on a situation that's unrelated why are you bringing this up when there's something going on because people are supporting something that's going on right now i don't like that i think that's dumb i think that's tasteless i think that's that's ego feeding it feeds into your ego you're trying to be that high and mighty person shut up shut up just chill bro Jesus Christ, you would want someone to have some empathy for you if someone was invading your homeland. You would want them to have empathy and not talk about some other thing. You would want them to care. Like, yeah. I'm not even going to go into that. Not trying to get canceled on this channel. But comment down below. Let me know. What's your guys' uh, thoughts and opinions on WWE banning all their content in Russia? And on y'all thoughts and opinions on what Nia Jax has to say, man. But I appreciate all the love and support. Road to 70K. Appreciate y'all kicking me. See y'all next one. Peace.